Hi right, everyone, welcome back to another little video. Um, I'm just going to say a big thank you to the VXR Owners Club and Lottie for having us on the stand and thank you for everyone that voted for us yesterday uh, at the Vauxhall Show of 2023 down at uh, the British Museum. Um, so today's video is just going to be on what it's cost me so far to build the Corsa. That does, this doesn't include the car and there's a few of uh, well, of the little bits and bobs I've missed off the list just because they're fiddly bits like I've brought two lower arms and stuff. Um, if I'm looking down a lot it's because I've got a notepad with everything written down so I don't forget anything. So I'm just going to reel them off so everyone can get a gist of what the car's like cost so far to build and I'm nowhere near finished. Just don't tell the missus because she's going to kill me because we're supposed to be saving for a house. So, shh. Anyway, so we're going to start off with the bodywork. So my smooth bumper cost 150 quid in products. That was plastic filler, inner tech glue, um, some plastic I cut up out of another bumper. That was the same plastic that the bumper's already made from. That doesn't include labour. None of this stuff will include labour. But I'll just put a rough ball figure on labour at the end of the video. Um, the headlights I got from eBay, they were 284 quid. I think they're decent. I think I just need to put some white bulbs in or maybe some LED bulbs if they'll work. Um, the bonnet vent, now that I've put £100 down for that because I had to buy the actual vent. But I had the bonnet at work so I could cut the actual vent hole out itself and weld it in. And then fill it and obviously make sure it all fit. TCR splitter kit, obviously they are what they are. They cost me £288 for the whole kit. That's front splitter, side splitters and the rear bumper splitters. The arch kit, now it was like £550 but time import tax and everything came on, it came out at £750 just for the kit. This doesn't include gluing it on, any of the labour, um, the amount of hours I put in on filler work on it to make sure all the edges were straight and they didn't look all wobbly and everything, but they came out at £750. I put in new glass all the way around because it just looked terrible when I cut it out. Some of the rubbers were like starting to perish, like you, obviously you get the watermarks on the glass where all the tint starts to like sort of peel off, so I just replaced it all. That came out at £960. Now I've got the new blackouts, they're the bits that go like down just here in the outsides. Um, they were 110 quid just for gloss black. Like I could have got the textured ones, they come out like 50 quid, they were cheap. But I got these from Vauxhall because I brought some off eBay at £20 and they were just woeful. They were too thin. Uh, obviously the wind deflectors, they came out at £30. Now the door handles, are... <sighs> this is a difficult one. Everyone always asks me, are they cool? Like... How much they cost would you do it for other people etc they're hard work <laughs> like i have to measure them down i had to measure to the mill it took me hours measuring to see if they would fit anywhere in the door i got them to fit but i've put this down as 1400 quid because the doors each were like between four and five hundred quid each and then there's obviously filler in that there's welder so i've put them down at 1400 quid now i could probably do them for about 1600 quid all fitted in the car all smoothed out primed ready for whoever wanted to paint them but i just don't feel like because i'm still having teething problems i don't feel like i'd probably still do them for anyone at the moment weather strips now they are the strips that go on the outside of the glass along the top of your door they came out at 64 pound my rear lights are the dna lights which are obviously left hand drive so i need to do some wiring to switch the reverse and fog lamp round but they're at 240 pound Tailgate Smooth came in as a product, so like the bit sheet of metal I've used, the welder, filler, etc. That was 160 quid to do. Right, paint and lacquer. Now, I've put a thousand pound down, but I think it was a little bit more, just because of the diamond burst lacquer I put on it, which was, that was like 50 pound a litre, and I put like, I think it was like five litres over the car, and then there was another, I don't know, five litres of ordinary Sickens lacquer, and then the Nardo Grey was by, Oh, I can't remember now. It might be Sickens or PPG. And that was like 600 quid. But I put a £1,000 down just for that because obviously it's more labour intensive prepping your panels than it is actually buying the actual materials. So that's like more or less the body work done. So for the inside, obviously the retrim. Now, if you've watched the video, you know I've got the seats done. I've brought a new steering wheel, uh, obviously rear delete kit and stuff. But the retrim itself is just for the seats 
and the gator bit and the gear knob that I had retrimmed and that came out £1,150. Now I wasn't happy with the steering wheel that the guy did for me and I did I did knock some money off the seats because I wasn't quite happy with some of the stuff he did on the seats. So I brought another steering wheel and that cost me £270 off eBay from I think it was Steering Wheel Brothers or is it Brothers Steering Wheel? I can't remember which one but one of them anyway, whichever way around it is. Now the rear seat delete kit I paid like £250 for. It is what it is, it's some plyboard, carpet, some web meshing and that's about it really in a pole. I painted it myself so it would match the car. I've got a pumpkin head unit which is £260, I've wired it all in, obviously myself, I've put all the trinkets you get in the box with it all installed. The LED kit, now I know you can get these from, is it Crazy LEDs and they're like 20 quid for the kit but I just sent my whole lot off to him because I was just too busy to do it myself and he did it all for 100 quid so I can't moan. Now the cluster background, I don't know if anyone actually noticed it at the show or not. But obviously, if you look at my clusters where my rev counters and stuff are, we've got a custom one that's got the two spanners logo in it and it's white and grey to match the car. And then the boot pop is 25 quid. That was just for like two buttons and some wiring that I more or less had laying around anyway. Now for the underside, if you've watched any of the previous videos, you'll know I had to buy a subframe, which was 120 quid because I don't know how it passed in MOT, but one where the wishbone bolt went through on the lower arm, it was all rotten away, the bolt was barely holding on, so I don't know how it passed an MOT, it was shocking, so I replaced that. Then we just got a subframe brace just to stiffen it up a bit, which was 30 quid. Lower arms, well they are what they are, they're 80 quid. I thought I'd just put new ones on because obviously next we got the poly bushes, which were 379 quid for the whole car. They were quite easy to do, to be fair, because we've got a bush puller, so we had it all done. We've done a video on it, so if you want to check it out, you can. Discs and pads, I kind of got EBS pads and then some uprated discs with the uh, C hooks in it just to help clean the dust off, which was £290. Braided hoses, I think they're the Hello ones, they were £150. Stance coilovers, they were £300. Now, would I recommend them to anyone? No, I wouldn't. They're absolutely poor, to be fair. The front ones are not too bad, but honestly, the back springs are so thin and weak, it was unreal. My car just bottomed out everywhere it went. So it sits lovely and I haven't put these into the cost, but I went back to normal springs and normal um, struts for the back. Well, dampers, sorry, for the back. So I haven't put them in the cost, but you know, they are what they are. I sent it back. I've kept the front coilovers in for now until I can save up some money because I think I'm going to air ride it. So we'll see how that goes. Right, wheel refurbs, because I know a guy, I got them done for 150 quid, uh, for £145, that was sandblasted and it was all powder coated in black. Tyres, we've got proxies on there, they're £320. Wheel spacers, now if you're at the show, you know I'm running 50 mil wheel, wheel spacer at the back, I had to get custom made from a fab company and then they're 30 mils on the front at the moment. I just haven't decided on what wheels I want to put on the car because the whole car, idea of this concept of car was to make it look like it came out of the factory like it rather than oh it's a real jazzy show car so the wheel spaces were 240 quid then you know because i'm in that era i put some underglows under there that was 23 quid off ebay like it's next to nothing um ash did a video on installing them we didn't because it's just basic easy stuff you either cable tie them or stick them underneath where you want them run the wires to wherever put them on a positive and negative jobs are good and use an app turn them on the exhaust we got in steel, which was the Cobra exhaust, that was £340. Now, I think it's quite nice, to be fair. I think the sounds like, sounds nice. It doesn't... I can still hear my radio over it and stuff, so I don't think that's terrible. Now, there is a lot missing off this list, and that's just because... I can't, li I can't remember everything. I've brought things twice because things have messed up, or i.e. the coilovers. I've put ordinary springs back in the back just because the stance ones were uh, uh, rubbish. And I'm not anywhere near done with the car because obviously I've got the engine bay to dress up yet. Do I put a sound system in it? Um, obviously, I really now I think I'm dedicated to wanting an air ride so I can lower it at the shows and stuff. Um, but anyway, the total came out at £9,178 just in parts. That's not including the car or my labour. Now the car I believe I got for £2,800, um, that was 
I got about five, six hundred quid knocked off because obviously, you know, you get the rev counter issue, that way it just spins all the way around or it doesn't do anything. I'll fix that myself. That's an easy fix. I wouldn't pay anyone to do it. If you're capable with a solder and iron and you've got a second pair of clocks kicking around, just desolder the motor on the back of the board, solder in the new one. It's literally a five minute job. Like, took, I literally drove down to work and had it back out and all done in like seven minutes and drove home and it's been perfectly fine. Um, and then obviously we had the subframe issues if you've watched the other videos, so I got money back off the car for that. But um, I think that's about it for this video. Like, there's going to be more content on the course, or it might be a bit slower than normal now because obviously money's tight. I've got to save for a house, or she's going to kill me. Um, and I've changed jobs, so there's not really much I can do at the moment. I'm just settling in, trying to get on, make some actual money there for the first month because I've only been there for a few weeks. Um, I think that's really about it. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video so you know what my car's roughly cost me so far. Oh, I should really mention the labour cost. I'll probably say the labour cost was about, oh, if I was to do it for someone, six grand to put the arches on, do all the welding and stuff, prep it all ready for paint. So yeah, I don't know, we're probably looking at like, what, 17, 18 grand if I paid someone to do all this for me, which is a bit ridiculous for a show car. But hey ho, like I was saying anyway, I think that's about it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and also comment. We'd like talking to all our members that have subscribed, like, it was nice to meet everyone at the Vauxhall show also. So um, thank you very much and we'll see you in the next one.